swift and powerful, strong and sleek. They rule their domain with unchallenged authority. Come face to face with the governing body of the animal kingdom, the carnivorous elite of the Predator Party. In Africa, the forces of nature have, over the millennia, carved out a rugged mountain backbone to the continent. Towering over all is the magnificent Kilimanjaro. From these mountains flow the rivers, like arteries carrying life to the forest, bush, and endless plains below. This is an ancient landscape, shaped by rain and fire. To take advantage of its dazzling diversity of habitats, there has evolved the greatest array of hoofed animals the world has ever seen. Here, they adapted and survived in every shape and form. Some big, some small. Some eat grass, some eat leaves. Some wander alone while others gather together in herds. All are survivors in their own right. And to balance the multiplying millions of the herbivores, there are the eaters of meat, the carnivores. Their bodies built for strength and speed, they possess a degree of intelligence needed to outwit their prey. They are all born to hunt, and though they are many, and their sizes and shapes are adapted to the variety of their victims, five of them can be called the super predators. The big five in African carnivores have evolved out of that eternal struggle between predator and prey. A struggle that has fitted each one of them for their roles in the life and death drama that is played out daily in the forests and on the plains of Africa. They live in a harsh world where the punishment for failure is often death. The prey must escape or die, but the predator too is at risk. As we will see, with every hunt, there is the hazard of injury, and a predator who cannot hunt will surely starve. Nature is indifferent to the fate of individuals. Only the species is important. So we must be careful not to judge the predators by human standards. They pursue their prey not in anger or with hatred, but because nature has equipped them so superbly to do just that, to hunt, to kill, to survive, and each in its own way. stand at the top of the predator hierarchy. The male, weighing in at 190 to 220 kilograms, is Africa's largest cat and second only in the world to the tiger. The hyenas are next, up to 81 kilograms, with the females often bigger than the males. Then come the wild dogs at between 20 and 32 kilograms. Of the solitary predators, the leopard is the largest. A male adult can weigh 90 kilograms. And at the bottom of the list is the cheetah, between 39 and 65 kilograms. One thing all the super predators have in common is a dramatic ability to kill. These zebras don't notice the lions lying in the grass. The lions let them pass. An impatient, half-grown male starts to follow. You can see he is young and inexperienced. Now the older and more experienced lioness takes over. A lioness is smaller than her mate, between 120 and 150 kilograms. But her lighter build makes her more streamlined and agile, and often a more successful hunter. She uses the tall grass to cover her approach. Her concentration is intense and absolute.
Let John Varty, wildlife cameraman, take us through that kill again. He has a choice of two zebra. She chooses correctly without hesitation. It is her claws that anchor her to the zebra's back so that her weight prevents it from kicking her. Initially, she can't get a killing bite. She goes for the spine. This is why the zebra is able to give the distress call. However, as soon as she can, she shifts her grip to the throat. She uses the zebra struggling to sink her canines deeper and deeper, closing off the windpipe so that the zebra soon loses consciousness. A kill feeds not only the predator itself, but also other members of the group, as well as a host of scavengers, even down to the insects and microorganisms that dispose of the last scraps. It is one of nature's ways of redistributing resources. In order to kill successfully, the predators must be equipped with certain basic physical attributes. The eyesight of the predators is exceptional. Those that hunt in the day, cheetah and wild dog, have their eyes shaded by dark markings to cut down the glare of the open grasslands. Both the nocturnal cats, the lion and the leopard, have white below their eyes to reflect the maximum amount of light. Their eyes are adapted to the dark with a tapetum or reflective layer behind the retina. It allows them to see in one-eighth of the light needed by the human eye. As with all creatures that need to see at night, they have more rods than cones in their eye structure. This gives them improved night vision, but at the cost of color discrimination. This is how we see this scene, and this is how it looks to both the lion and the zebras. The colorblind view that a lion gets of the fleeing zebra stripes is very confusing and could help them escape. All the predators have acute hearing, far superior to human beings. See how the hyena and the leopard scan with their ears to locate the faintest sound. But it is the wild dog with its outsized ears that probably has the sharpest hearing of them all. What is an asset when locating the prey can be a liability when stalking. Here the dog flattens its ears to make them less conspicuous. Sound plays an important role in their social structure. They call to each other either for communication or to advertise that a territory is occupied. Naturally, predators must have a sense of smell far superior to ours. The hyena, who spends a large amount of time scavenging, has a superior scenting ability. Watch how this one locates a piece of meat in the water. All the predators drink regularly when water is available. Notice how the cats keep their heads clear of the water as they drink. They use their tongues to lap it backwards into their mouths. Hyenas and wild dogs, on the other hand, submerge their muzzles and drink by lapping forward. Much of Africa is hot and dry, so water is an important part of temperature control. Cats do not usually like water, but wild dog and hyena seem to enjoy taking to it to play and escape the heat of the African summer. Cats keep cool by panting, so that the air passes over the minute blood vessels in the wet tongue. Teeth are the main weapons for any predator. The lioness's 50 millimeter canines block off this giraffe's air supply. Despite her power, it took her 20 minutes to suffocate her prey. The leopard's teeth are up to 32 millimeters long. Here, a female has clamped the windpipe of the impala and waits patiently 
for it to drop. Because this impala is small, the leopard uses the neck grip. The disadvantage is that its distress calls could attract unwanted competition. On this tiny impala, the cheetah needs only the left upper and lower of her 25 millimeter canines to throttle it. Here, a female leopard uses the suffocation method on an adult impala. One would expect it to put up more of a fight, but it is probably in a state of deep shock. The wild dog's teeth are shorter, designed more for holding rather than stabbing. Teeth are not only for killing. When feeding, the carnassal teeth at the back of the jaw are used. See how she turns her head to one side so that they can cut through the tough skin like scissors. The leopard cub uses his incisors to pluck the hair from the impala carcass. The leopard is the only predator known to do this. But of all the predators, it is the hyena that has jaws that are legendary in their power. The bone-crushing molars, aided by powerful jaw and neck muscles, give it the huge mechanical advantage to cut through 25 millimeter thick hippo hide. No skin, not the giraffes, or even that of the armor-plated crocodile is too much for the hyena's jaws. The Predator Party will continue on the Discovery Channel. In 1989, filmmakers chronicled an unprecedented journey. What they captured on film is an odyssey you'll never forget. A look at Russia from the Red Express, beginning Wednesday at 10 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. When you're flying north, fly the airline that leads the way, with more comfort and more legroom, on the only business class to more of Canada. Air Canada, it's a welcome departure. Milk, what's in it for you? Your first step, the camera. Carbohydrate, for energy. Okay, Kimmy. Magnesium, that's it. For balance. Oh. And milk's got phosphorus. No, honey. Well, it wouldn't for reflexes, Ooh. but it's thankfully slim on calories. <laughs> Daddy's little girl's walking. Hon, get the camera. Milk, it does a body good. Here. There. Everywhere. The Desk Jet Portable. Desk Jet Printers from Hewlett Packard. Make it happen. A blind lady has been attacked again. Imagine living in a world... There is a bad man out there! ...where light never penetrates the darkness. Why does he want to kill me? Where you're never sure if someone is watching. If he's in the room with her, she's dead! ...and waiting. There is no serial killer. Where reaching out <laughs> can be a matter of life <laughs> or death. Gen number 8, rated R. Starts Friday, November 6th at theaters everywhere. Thursday night on the Learning Channel comes a story that's never been told. In perhaps the greatest achievement of our time, men have walked upon another world, and their lives were changed forever. Find out how on the other side of the moon, a U.S. cable premiere on the next episode of Beliefs, Thursday night at 10 on the Learning Channel. Join a team of Japanese filmmakers as they attempt to discover the secrets of the Red Kangaroos of the Outback. Monday at 9 Eastern, only on Discovery Showcase. Where can you find the unsurpassed quality and flavor of Coleman beef? Raised naturally without hormones and antibiotics. Mrs. Cooch's Naturally. Where can you find the delicious homemade taste of garden fresh salsa? Made daily with only locally grown ingredients and no preservatives. Mrs. Gooch's, naturally. To me, boxing is simple. Hit them, hit them again, knock them out and leave. Now I'm going to fight a band of holy field. I'm bigger than he is, I'm younger than he is, and I can knock him out with either hand. On November 13th, there's going to be a new heavyweight champion. Me. Really? Budweiser presents Holyfield vs. Bo, heavyweight championship Friday, November 13th, the Mirage, Las Vegas.
The Discovery Channel now continues with the Predator Party. The cats all have rounded heads and short muzzles. This gives them the powerful grip needed to subdue a struggling animal. On the other hand, wild dogs, the lightest of the super predators, have long jaws to help them hold onto their prey as it runs. Each of the predators is physically adapted to its own style of hunting. Strong legs and a muscular body give the lion the strength to pull a carcass twice its own weight. It is this great strength that allows them to tackle prey as large as giraffe, waterbuck, even buffalo, weighing 900 kilograms. The leopard also has great strength. With short legs to give them a low center of gravity, they regularly hoist prey equal to, or even exceeding, their own weight. Soft pads are especially critical to stalking predators. It is said that a leopard can place its hind foot exactly in the footprint left by the front. In this way, it lessens the chance of alerting its intended victim by snapping a twig or rustling the grass. The leopard's paw is suited to life in the trees. Very flexible, it molds itself to the branch for a better grip. Here, a leopard cub develops dexterity. This is play, but later in life, that skill will serve a practical purpose. See how he holds the impala's head with its dangerous horns safely out of the way. Paws also have much more mundane uses, covering the scent of a kill to keep competitors away, or excavating a den in a termite mound. But it is the cheetah that really makes impressive use of its paws while hunting. Within the first few strides, the cheetah is up to speed, even before the gazelles realize that the hunt is on. She selects a target, and once the choice is made, she will not deviate. The cheetah is built for speed with a light body and a small head. Large nostrils feed the body with air. The powerful chest and leg muscles combined with long legs and a flexible spine drive her forward at a reputed 110 kilometers an hour. Every move by the gazelle is countered by the cheetah. Her long flat tail enables her to maintain balance at speed. The whole design of the cheetah molded to perfection by evolution is for this moment. Now watch that front paw. That is the one that will sweep the gazelle's legs from under it. The oxygen-starved gazelle dies quickly in the jaws of the cheetah. Cheetah's claws are partly retractable. This means that in the retracted position, they still project enough to give them traction. Lions and leopards have hooked claws protected by a sheath against being blunted by wear, but which can be unsheathed when needed. To keep them sharp and clean, they frequently pull them through the bark of trees. This could also be used as a scent marking technique. Sharp claws are also useful when climbing trees. Watch how this leopard uses its claws to hook the piglet out of its hole. Monitor lizard's scaly hide is, however, too tough for even these claws to penetrate. Further up the paw is the equivalent of our thumb, the dew claw, used for hooking and clamping. Predators' tails have various functions. The tip of the lion's tail is black, a sharp contrast to the predominant colors of the grass. As with the black at the back of their ears, it acts as a following mechanism for the rest of the pride. A lion will also demonstrate anger by lashing its tail. 
The strikingly white tip of his mother's tail, carried at eye level, makes an easy mark for this cub to follow. It is also a tempting plaything. The flag-like tails of the wild dogs pinpoint the kill in the long grass for other members of the pack. Tails are also part of body language. These hyena show excitement by raising their tails as they invade the territory of another clan. Predators have skin color to match more or less their surroundings. Even the hyena and wild dog, which don't rely on stealth, have coat markings to make them less conspicuous. It is among the stalkers that camouflage is most important. A lioness blends with the winter grass. The leopard markings are the most versatile. The spots break up the outline to make the animal blend in with its surroundings. In dappled sun and shade, the leopard becomes almost invisible. There are also freak variations in color. A recessive gene, which emerges periodically, produces white lions and the king cheetah, with its bolder, striped markings. At one time, it was thought that the handsome king cheetah was a separate species, but today it is recognized as a variation. So far, we have looked at the physical adaptions of the predators, but success also depends on the way in which these adaptions are used. Experience, patience, timing, and sometimes a bit of luck are all important. This lioness is watching a migrating herd of wildebeers from her vantage point on a termite mound. She analyzes the available cover, the wind, the speed and direction of the herd, and makes her decision. The wildebeest try to neutralize the chances of attack by keeping together and walking in single file. Watch how she moves. She keeps her eyes fixed on the herd. And should an animal look in her direction, she freezes. As she approaches, she becomes more and more cautious. You can see from the movement of the grass that she is keeping downwind. Notice how the ears are laid back to flatten her outline. Her legs are tucked under her for maximum acceleration. She knows that her best chance of success lies in the panic created by her initial rush. See how the terrain can be critical to the success or failure of a kill. Watch how she trips. She recovers quickly, but the wildebeest is fast, and it looks like it is clear. But then it stumbles, and this proves fatal. Notice the danger as she grabs it from behind. This is where a flying hoof can so easily break a jaw. She's obviously an experienced hunter. See how she kicks the wildebeest's back legs from under it. If it fell on her, it could cripple her. Now she uses her weight and incredible strength to wrestle the animal to the ground. The moment she has it under control, she goes for the throat grip. And this will block off the air supply. Her front legs pin its head to the ground, giving it no chance of escape. At this point, the wildebeest is in a deep state of shock and offers no resistance. It has been said that lions are not emotional, but clearly there is enjoyment at the success of this hunt. Scientists have long argued about how much is instinctive and how much is learned in the hunting techniques. Cheetahs seem to train their young more than any of the other super predators. Just watch this. The mother cheetah makes a perfect attack but does not complete the kill. Instead, she stuns the animal. When her cubs arrive, the gazelle gets up and runs. One of them, just four months old, pulls it down. This is an incredible feat for such a young animal. It appears to be a training exercise for the cubs. At no time does the mother interfere, Instead, she keeps a sharp lookout for other predators. 
One of the cubs tries to suffocate the animal, but its jaws are just too small. Finally, it kills it with a classic throat grip. The wild dogs depend on stamina and on the cooperation of other members of the pack. Watch how the second dog lopes along on the inside. Should the gazelle turn, he will be in a perfect position to cut it off. Because he is cutting across the angle, he runs less distance and remains fresh if the lead dog tires. In this case, it was the gazelle who simply runs out of steam and the pack makes short work of it. Most people think of hyenas as scavengers, but studies show that they do a considerable amount of hunting. Here, they watch a wildebeest herd, looking for signs, undetectable to our eyes, of weakness. Notice that there is no spectacular rush as with lions or cheetah. Instead, the hyena wears its prey down with incredible stamina. It has a high heart-to-body weight ratio, which enables it to run for long periods. The wildebeest is beginning to tire and makes a half-hearted effort to seek the protection of the rest of the herd. The hyena may look ungainly with its heavy neck, shoulders and short back legs, but this gives it tremendous holding power. This is why it goes for the soft underbelly. It gets a grip on its prey, but it hasn't got the lion's strength and weight and perhaps most important, does not have the claws to grip. So the hyena can't put it down. So it hangs on, wearing it out. The wildebeest survives the first attack and turns on its tormentor. At this stage of the hunt, the hyena is in complete control, but still takes no chances. Like a boxer, it bobs and weaves. When the second hyena arrives, the pair begin a relentless chase. The young wildebeest seeks the help of an elephant cow on her calf, but to no avail. In the end, the accumulation of bites and exhaustion weakens the wildebeest. By this time, it is so numbed by shock that it hardly reacts and is literally eaten alive. The vultures and Malibu storks have been watching the drama, and it isn't long before they fly in to fight over their share of the spoils. on the Discovery Channel. You're watching the Discovery Channel. Remember when cats sang for Meow Mix? Meow, meow, meow. Well, today's Meow, meow Mix meow, tastes even better. Meow, meow. With flavors cats prefer over the old Meow Mix, three to one. And cats are doing more than singing for it. Meow Mix. Tastes so good, cats ask for it by name. Meow. To say the least. Yep, it's a dull, boring morning. 65 degrees. No wind. No clouds. Dull. breakfast. Your teeth aren't flat, are they? Of course not. If they were, a flat brush would be ideal. But since your teeth are shaped like this, we designed our brush like this. Introducing Crest Complete. Your dentist uses special instruments that get between teeth. Crest Complete gets between two, up to 37% farther than the leading flat bristle brush. So to help maintain a dentist clean at home, get new Crest Complete. 
Only Crest could make a brush this complete. When you're flying north, fly the airline that leads the way with more comfort and more legroom on the only business class to more of Canada. Air Canada. It's a welcome departure. Thursday night on the Learning Channel comes a story that's never been told. In perhaps the greatest achievement of our time, men have walked upon another world, and their lives were changed forever. Find out how on the other side of the moon, a U.S. cable premiere on the next episode of Beliefs, Thursday night at 10 on the Learning Channel. Discovery Channel now continues with the Predator Party. There is another great predator. Some call it the sixth super predator. It is both hunter and scavenger. Its patience is unmatched. Its strength and speed are phenomenal. It is big, sometimes over a ton, and can live well into its second century. Playing exactly the same role as the land predators, its habitat is limited to the lakes and rivers of Africa. It is Crocodilus niloticus, the Nile crocodile. As the hordes of the great migration approach the water, they become increasingly nervous. They know they must run the gauntlet. The crocodile is a lie and wait predator. It doesn't roam the area looking for prey. Instead, it waits safe in the knowledge that one good meal will keep it alive for a long time. It is estimated that a large crocodile can go without food for up to two years. The wildebeest have no defense against the crocodile. All they can do is rely on numbers. The majority will pass, even though this one is taken. The attack comes from under the water. The crocodile has very powerful jaw muscles, and once the 60 interlocking teeth close, there is little chance of escape. It doesn't have to kill its prey in the same way that a land predator does. Instead, it maneuvers it into deeper water and allows the river to do the rest. ties itself and the crocodile eventually drags it under. Once the river has done its work, the crocodile can feed with little interference except from its own kind. Here a zebra has injured itself during the crossing. Ever an opportunist it isn't long before a crocodile removes it. The crocodile's teeth are ideal for gripping, but they do not have the shearing, cutting action do those of the land predators. So it uses its strength and weight to tear off mouthfuls of flesh. Particularly tough parts are twisted off as it spins its body. A crocodile has no lips, so its mouth leaks. And to keep the water out of its lungs, it has a valve at the back of its throat. 
To swallow, it must open this valve so it lifts its head out of the water and uses gravity to throw the chunks of food back into its gullet. Because the crocodile has so little competition, it can also store its food for long periods to be eaten at leisure. Only the leopard, by hoisting its prey into a tree, can afford, like the crocodile, to feed over a period of days. Compare this with the brutal, aggressive feeding of the lions competing with other members of the pride. A lion can take up to 25% of its own mass in one feed. This young male ate an entire impala of 35 kilograms at one sitting. These four wild dogs finished this impala in 30 minutes. 40 hyena ate a 2,000 kilogram hippo in two nights. And by the time it was finished, each would have consumed 50 kilograms of meat. But even the powerful digestion of the hyena cannot compare to the stomach of the crocodile, whose acidic digestive juices can deal with every part of its victim, including horns. The land predators are more selective, choosing parts for their nutritive value or accessibility. This lion delves deep for the liver, rich in vitamins. Nature has not designed the system so that the predators wipe out the prey. A delicate balance exists between them to ensure the survival of both. There are times of plenty when the hunting is easy, but there are also lean times when circumstances change. Africa is a land of extremes. Drought follows flood. This is when the weak are eliminated. Young and inexperienced animals get pushed out of the prime territories. The old and slow cannot compete. Even the fittest must search long and hard. These lions are reduced to hunting abandoned mongoose, and then losing it, they fight in frustration. times like this that the ability of the predator to adapt becomes critical and the leopard is surely the most adaptable of them all. This young male survives by catching catfish in a drying pool. And in this struggle for survival the prey are not helpless. They too have developed defensive techniques like elevating themselves to increase their field of view. They have superb hearing and exceptional eyesight. In fact, most of the herbivores have eyes set far back in their heads to give them a wide field of view. Good night vision helps them in the dark. Sometimes they group together, not only among themselves, but also with other species, combining height, hearing, sight, and scent for mutual protection. Watch how one animal keeps watch while the others drink, and vice versa. Alarm calls of one species can warn others of danger. This squirrel alerts the herd to the hunting. Animal. But while there is some safety in numbers, a group by its size also advertises its presence. So some animals remain solitary. A lone diker freezes, motionless, unnoticed, allowing the lions to pass. This diker heads for dense bush, where the wild dog is less effective. Two different survival techniques from the same species. A warthog backs down his hole, out of reach of the lions. This one, on the other hand, uses aggression to scare off a cheetah. Many herbivores are equipped with lithe bodies and long limbs for running, jumping and dodging. Look how the split-second lunge helps the impala evade the cheetah. Terrain is critical to the success of a hunting predator. This lioness has no chance of surprise over open ground. Burnt ground provides little cover for a hunting leopard. 
tall grass limits the cheetah's view, as well as preventing it from reaching maximum speed. There seems to be a critical distance. Provided the prey can see the predators are beyond it, they feel no threat. Naturally, this varies from species to species. The gazelles may allow the cheetah to get within 80 meters before they take fright, whereas the bigger topi allow them to approach to 40 meters. Sometimes the prey become the aggressors, for nature has equipped them with an array of weapons in the form of horns, tusks, and hooves. It is not in the interest of a predator to risk a crippling injury. It is a confrontation between the strength of the buffalo and the numbers and cooperation of the pride. The lions must weigh up the risk of injury against food they might gain. The buffalo circles to protect his vulnerable rear. However, there are other subtleties at play. By thrashing the bushes, the buffalo is demonstrating his power. In effect, he is saying, see what I can do. Do you still want to tangle with me? At this point, both parties lie down, a stalemate. Finally, the bull makes it to the marsh. The lions follow, but here the terrain becomes a factor, as the lions are reluctant to attack in swampy ground. The buffalo has used strength and intelligence to escape. Buffalo in a herd have a big advantage and completely rout the lions. This young male was lucky to make it to a tree, just out of reach of the enraged buffalo. Other prey also use attack as a means of defense. One kick of a giraffe can kill a lion. So as long as this calf stays close to its mother, it is safe. These wildebeest, instead of running from the wild dogs, use attack as their defense. Here, a lioness completely surprises the wildebeest, but her attack is indecisive, so the bull's quick reaction grabs the initiative. This lioness seems certain to catch the warthog, but whether on purpose or by coincidence, a white rhino moves between them, which allows the warthog to escape. The rhino's massive bulk is all the defense it needs. The predator party will continue on the Discovery Channel. You're watching the Discovery Channel. It feels as refreshing as it looks. Shower massage from Teledyne Waterbeck. Overwhelming evidence indicates that the cure for the disease of illiteracy is the restoration of intensive systematic phonics in every classroom in America. Learn to read with Hooked on Phonics, the musical reading program. Then, read to learn with SRA reading comprehension used by over 60 million people. Hooked on Phonics works for me. Call 1-800-ABCDEFG. Whenever you vacuum, use Woolite Self-Cleaning Rug Cleaner. It's so easy to get clean rugs in minutes with no scrubbing. We have time to show you again. Whenever you vacuum, use Woolite Self-Cleaning Rug Cleaner. It's so easy to get clean rugs in minutes with no scrubbing. We had time to show you again. And now there's new Woolite Pet Stain Eliminator. It removes tough pet stains and odors better than ordinary rug cleaners. When you're flying north, fly the airline that leads the way with more comfort and more legroom on the only business class to more of Canada. Air Canada. It's a welcome departure. Thursday night on the Learning Channel comes a story that's never been told. In perhaps the greatest achievement of our time, men have walked upon another world. And their lives were changed forever. Find out how on the other side of the moon, a U.S. cable premiere on the next episode of Beliefs. 
Thursday night at 10 on the Learning Channel. After World War II, the U.S. entered a time of peace, or so we thought. See why post-war America entered another war. Watch Korea, the Forgotten War, Sunday at 9 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Where can you find the unsurpassed quality and flavor of Coleman beef, raised naturally without hormones and antibiotics? Mrs. Cooch's Naturally. find an incredible variety of the freshest fish from all over the world that's top of the catch and without preservatives. Mrs. Gucci's Naturally. Presenting Digital Music Express. 30 channels of CD quality music for your stereo. No interruptions. No talk. Never. And for you classical lovers, DMX offers separate channels for symphonic, chamber music, and opera. If you like music, you're going to love DMX, Digital Music Express. Just call us today. Call now for a special offer and free demonstration. The Discovery Channel now continues with The Predator Party. To survive, the grass eaters of the open plains must protect their newborn young. Here again, nature has evolved ways of minimizing the threat. One of these is to time the birth for the hot parts of the day, when the predators are least active. Another is to synchronize the births within the herd, so that they swamp the predators by sheer weight of numbers. They also produce young that are able, as in the case of this calf, to stand within six minutes, walk in ten, and run with the herd in half an hour. A Thompson's gazelle eats the afterbirth off its fawn to reduce the chances of it being scented. For the next few hours, it will rely on camouflage to protect it. However, no system is infallible. This cheetah has discovered a way to counter the gazelle's camouflage. Instead of long, energy-sapping chases after adults, she waits, close to the herd. Cheetahs have incredible vision, and she knows that sooner or later one of the well-hidden fawns will raise its head, looking for its mother to suckle. is inevitable. But we must remember that without predators to control their numbers, the gazelles, like other prey species, would soon multiply to the point of mass starvation. At times, nature can seem cruel and indifferent. But predators play a vital role in the long-term well-being of both the prey and the environment. The impala is too sick to keep with the herd. During the night, it is efficiently removed. There is no hope for a young gazelle with a broken leg. A cheetah puts an end to its suffering. Any animal that breaks the rules is vulnerable. An impala strays from the herd. A young wildebeest decides to graze on its own. A successful predator must adapt to its habitat. 
compare these dogs stalking through the woodland to those on the open grasslands. Watch how they stalk the impala. Ears back, they try for the element of surprise. Here they confuse the herd. In essence, they neutralize the defense advantage of the herd by isolating an impala and making it more vulnerable. The dog goes for the throat, but without the long canines of the cats, it is not effective. So it goes for the disemboweling action. It is interesting to note that the rarest of the predators, the cheetah and the wild dogs, are also the most successful hunters, but they often lose their prey to others. The dogs feed fast, and this proves correct when a hyena arrives. It sees an opportunity and one-on-one -on -one dominates the dog and takes its share of the kill. Of the five super predators, the lion and hyena were regularly robbed from the others. The cheetah is at the bottom of the hierarchy and loses more than any other predator. This kill shows that enormous energy can be spent with no guarantee of a meal in return. It is a long, hard chase, and the cheetah, which has a small heart-to-body ratio, is very near the limits of her endurance. She must catch her prey within 300 meters. The gazelle, too, is only capable of short bursts of speed, and in this case, it burns out first. It is already starved of oxygen and dies quickly. But the kill is right out in the open and the vultures appear even before the cheetah has recovered from the chase. Their arrival often draws attention to a kill. As soon as her exhausted body will allow, the cheetah begins to feed from the rump, where she can get the maximum meat in a limited time. Her haste is justified, as a young male lion has seen the vultures descend. At first, he does not notice the cheetah as she flattens herself against the ground. When he does, she accepts the inevitable and abandons her kill. For millions of years, the predators and their prey have lived here, in Africa. As each evolved, so too did the other. An evolutionary arms race that has preserved nature's intricate balance. But this balance was to change with the emergence in the dim distant past of another predator. Man. That man is a predator is certain. The forward-facing eyes and binocular vision are typical. But we have neither the speed, the strength, the claws, nor the teeth to compare with the super predators. Like them, we hunted and scavenged from the land, competing for food and space. It can be seen today in our closest relatives, the apes. Yet there was one aspect which more than compensated for our physical weakness. 
a brain that gave us the power to devise weapons. African plains with a pack of hungry hyenas, or join a herd of elephants for a morning bath. Discover the amazing secrets of the animal kingdom on Safari, Thursdays at 9 Eastern. One thing smells like bacon. That's bacon. Bacon, 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 bacon. There. From that bag. What's it say? I can't read. Please, please. Give me what's in the bag. Chewy, yummy, smoky bacon. Here you go. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. No, 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 no. It's bacon. No, it's bacon strips. Brand dog snack from Purina. Bacon strips. Dogs don't know it's not bacon. It's bacon. Here. Everywhere. The Desk Jet Portable. Desk Jet Printers from Hewlett Packard. Make it happen. You're watching the Discovery Channel. In 1989, a group of filmmakers chronicled an unprecedented journey across a part of the world few had ever seen. What they captured on film is an odyssey you'll never forget. From historic St. Petersburg to post Tiananmen, China, Take a ride on the Trans-Siberian Railroad and witness a Russia you've never known. The Red Express, beginning Wednesday at 10 Eastern, exclusively on the Discovery Channel. Thursday night on the Learning Channel comes a story that's never been told. In perhaps the greatest achievement of our time, men have walked upon another world and their lives were changed forever. Find out how on the other side of the moon, a U.S. cable premiere on the next episode of Beliefs, Thursday night at 10 on the Learning Channel. Soon there'll be a new Cracker Barrel old country store on this spot. We might have to cut down a few trees. But we'll save more than 40,000 trees this year alone by recycling. You see, Cracker Barrel has always depended on the good earth for the meals we serve. And we want to do our part to save our precious resources. Please join us in recycling. And as you travel across this great land, pay us a visit at the Cracker Barrel. In the last 18 hours, you've seen and done more than most people would in a lifetime. You've experienced the glory of nature and the beauty of our planet. You've witnessed man's quest for adventure and our hunger for achievement. You've traveled to the far corners of the globe and beyond. Tomorrow morning, we'll be back, and it all begins again. There's so much to see and so much to learn. We'll open your eyes to the world on the Discovery Channel.